Live from the Inspire Theater in the heart of fabulous downtown Las Vegas, we present the Downtown Podcast. Starring your hosts, Dylan Jorgensen, Bonnie Gore, Louisa B., Jason Outlaw, and music by yours truly, DJ Lenny Alfonso. Tonight's guest, fighter pilot, Chef Barlow. From Life is Beautiful and Window Media, Rayhan Kodri, Ryan Donnery, and Justin Winnegar. Musical guest, The Perks. Also, we'll be filming our YouTube exclusive interview with Anthony Ray, AKA Sir Mix-A-Lot. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the man who also likes big butts, Mr. Jason Outlaw. That was good. That was good. I was like, oh, you like that? How are we doing out there? Everyone doing all right? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Very exciting in Vegas. Uh, Vegas is a fun town. Everyone like Vegas? I love Vegas. Vegas is a good town. Yes, yes. One thing I noticed the other day, I just got to make a quick mention of. Did you ever notice you could tell how old a casino is based off the age of their cocktail waitresses? <laughs> it's very, very true. If you walk in a casino and you see a cocktail waitress, they got like the knee braces on. <laughs> And the carpal tunnel wrist thing, and they're walking around like Night of the Living Dead. They're like, cocktails. Might as well get your souvenirs now, because they're getting ready to implode that casino. That's the way it happens. Yes, indeed. Last time I saw that was at the Riv. Ooh. <laughs> Burn Riv. Yeah, don't judge me. I feel, I feel some judges out there. It's all right. It's good. It's good. <laughs> all right. Let's get into the hot topics. All right. So a man tweeted um, for help when he was stuck inside a FedEx overnight. Uh, he was finally released later that night. Uh, he was not harmed, but every coffee machine had his butt cheeks on it. <laughs> it's a very good thing he was not Anthony Weiner, though. Just saying. Just saying. Yeah. Good thing. You like that? I, I did that little, th that's a little throwback. I was like, Anthony Weiner, where's he been? Who knows? Who knows? All right, uh, Donald Trump is in the news because he contacted the FBI after being threatened on Twitter by El Chapo, the Mexican drug lord that recently, yes. He recently escaped from prison, that's right. And uh, so, and, th and this is actually true, the uh, drug lord actually said, continue effing around and I will make you swallow your whore words. <laughs> yeah, yes indeed. El Chapo's son hopped in on it also after he said, say hello to my little son. <laughs> yes indeed, that's what he said, that's what he said. <laughs> on Wednesday, uh, we had our first exploration of Pluto. Did everyone see that? Yeah, we had our first exploration of Pluto. Yes, indeed. And everyone was really excited because everyone wanted to know what was on Pluto. But more importantly, everyone wanted to know what was in Uranus. Yes. That one was for you, Lenny. That one was for you, Speak Lenny. Speak for yourself on that one. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, all right, scientists are predicting a mini ice age. That's right, to occur in 2030. That's when the Ice Age will occur. Uh, so all those people, everyone out there who said they would do something when hell freezes over, get ready to pay up. <laughs> 50 Cent is in the news. He is filing for bankruptcy. You guys hear about this? Yes, uh, yes. so uh, he also said he's going to change his name from 50 Cent to Nickel. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Times are tough. So then, so then also everyone will be like, what up, my Nickel? <laughs> no? <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> the, uh, the Clark County School District is working on a new anti-bullying law. Yes, indeed, to stop anti-bullying. Uh, the law states that all children have to be slim enough to fit into lockers. <laughs> yep, yeah, I'll do. Get in there. That's why I stay so slim. You just push me in there. Yeah, but once I got tall, it hurt, hit my head. Never mind. All right. Uh, studies show that less people are coming to Vegas to get married. Yes, indeed. It's, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Excited. Yes. Yes. Grooms were quoted as saying, hey, you know something? I can give people half my stuff from out here. <laughs> All right, so uh, right now we're going to play a little game. This is a little game called How Hot Is It? So I'm going to say it's so hot in Vegas, and you guys are going to say, How hot is it? 
Exactly. That's the way it's going to go. Okay, cool. So here we go because it is very hot in Vegas this summer. It is so hot. How hot is it? It's so hot that Bruce, that uh, Caitlyn Jenner is changing her name back to Bruce Jenner because she's afraid of menopause. <laughs> it's hot. Sweaty. Yes, sweatiness. It happens. You get the hot flashes. All right, cool. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, actually, um, it's so hot in Vegas. How hot is it? The wheel at the link is now a hot dog cooker. <laughs> you guys remember those? Oh, old school, man. <laughs> it's really hot in Vegas. Juicy Couture is launching a new clothing line called Sweaty Couture. <laughs> and finally, it's really hot in Vegas. I saw the snowman from Frozen out on the strip posing as a glass of water. Yes, indeed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have an awesome show for you tonight. Give it up for DJ Lenny Alfonso! Welcome. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Downtown Podcast. Now, does anyone here like Top Gun? Yeah? Well, today we have a real live maverick, James Chef Barlow. He spent 20 years as an Air Force fighter pilot flying the A-10 Warthog. Now he is in the CEO of Blue Air Training, a Las Vegas-based defense contractor that flies their privately owned fleet of fighter jets from bases all over the United States to train special ops airstrike controllers on how to call in airstrikes. Now let's give a nice warm welcome to Chef Barlow. Thank you. Thank you. Have a seat. Thank you. Welcome to the podcast. I appreciate that. Thank well, you for having some ice water out for me. Oh, yes. Ice water. <laughs> Pilot, pilots don't drink, you know. <laughs> well, we really do appreciate you coming on, and you have a really fun story. Um, now, you tell us how it started. Why did you become a pilot? Oh, God. That, uh, I don't know. If, how long do we have in this? Uh, <laughs> just a couple minutes. Time. Okay, just a couple minutes. The, the short story is uh, my uh, best friend's father was a, a fighter pilot, Vietnam era. Um, I basically lived with them growing up, and it was something that I always said I wanted to do. So when I was 14, I called the recruiter and said, how do you become a fighter pilot? And she laughed and then said, go to high school, play varsity sports, get straight A's, go to college, get selected, be number one, and then do that. So. I did. So you did all that. Yeah. And just that simple, y'all. It's that simple. <laughs> That's all there is to it. So you became a fighter pilot. Yes. And you saw a void in some of the training while you were in the military. Exactly. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, so just to, to quickly explain, you know, everyone's seen the movie or, or a, a war movie where the army goes out and they get in a gunfight and then they start to lose and a guy gets on the radio and the Air Force shows up and drops bombs and saves the day. So that's real life. That happens in real that life. That happens, yes. That is exactly. Um, so the A-10, which is what I've flown for the last 20 years, I just retired from the Air Force. Um, and, and that aircraft. Yes. <laughs> So, so the A-10 was specifically designed to do close air support. It means dropping bombs very close right. to friendly forces. So I was in Afghanistan uh, that whole year in 2007, um, and I kept having to take control or on-scene command of my own airstrikes because there was no one on the ground to explain where are the good guys and where are the bad guys. Oh, wow. So, so, so yeah. That's risky. Yes, because they're, they're as close as half a football field away sometimes. Okay. So. Um, uh, I was lucky enough to be qualified to actually control airstrikes from the air. So I would control my own airstrikes, go to the tanker, air refuel, and then start calling in other fighters to control airstrikes. So, wow. Uh, at, the, at the time, I was finishing up my master's, and my, my research project was to, to figure out why we don't have airstrike controllers actually in the gunfights. And it turned out that there was a, a shortage of um, airstrike controllers due to a shortage in air support for their training. So, um, so I actually proposed to the Air Force, why don't we find some company that can fly some retired fighter jets and um, train these guys and we'll get them out in the field. And you say, you know, propose to the Air Force. I mean, you just went to 
the top and yeah, say, Yeah, I was, I was in the Air Force at right, the time. Yeah, I was, so I was the you chief of plans and programs, and, and I right. set it up the chain. So you're like, to let's, Air Command. let's yes. take care of this, and mm -hmm. how did they respond? And they said, we'll always have money, we'll always have airplanes, we'll always mm -hmm. have extra bandwidth, so we're the Air thank Force you, will no fly thank, our, yeah. Exactly, we're the Air Force will fly our own airplanes, and this was in 2008. Okay, well, we're, we're in 2015, and you're mm -hmm. the CEO of your own company exactly. that does training for this. How did you get there? Well, the, the short story is um, uh, for several years, um, I was helping train guys as part of my job in the Air Force. And then I came out here to Nellis to run the green flag exercise. And the green flag exercise is the pre-deployment combat exercise for both airstrike controllers and fighters. So every fighter or airstrike controller that went to combat between 2009 and 2012 came to my exercise. And I would set up real combat scenarios for them. And they had to go through that. And we would grade them. And then they'd go off to <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's really courageous stuff. But how did you get the courage to come back and say, "Look, I started my own business. You need my, you need what I have." Right. So, and 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 now you guys are leading in the industry. So we are. Yeah. So how did you get them? How did you convince them? So, to so hire I actually you? was able to start this company while I was still on active duty. Okay. So in 2011, a good friend of mine um, wanted to invest into in my company, uh, and I told him no three times, and uh, and on the fourth time. So my wife and I and, and him started this company. So, so we started in 2011, and it took about two years to actually build our own Air Force. Okay. Um, and I got two-star general approval to run the company, and um, it just has come on like gangbusters. Because now, finally, how many years later, they're realizing there is an, indeed a need for this. Wow, which benefits our military and our country exactly. as a whole in the, in the long run, right? Exactly. Well, we thank you for that. And for your persistence and for your investors' per persistence to you know, push it and get this kind of training with our military. So yes. that's exciting. And last but not least, so you have a nickname, Chef. Yes. You have to explain that. Well, it's um, not that I'm a cook or not that I, I do much actual cooking at home even. Um, when you're a lieutenant, right. uh, you become combat mission ready, which takes about three years of training. And you wear a name tag that says FNG. New guy, yeah. so you, you can break that out yeah. later. So, so that is your name, and your number, whatever, and, and and no one calls you by your name. Your FNG, whatever number. I think we number. should start calling new volunteers that. Exactly, by the way. because <laughs> no one bothers to know your name until you're ready to go to combat. So. Um, so yeah, so when you're finally mission ready, uh, they kick you out of, the, out of the room at the squadron bar, and everyone has a whole bunch of whiskeys, and, and they tell stories about you. And I got chef, not because I cook, but because I suppose they always have something cooking. Ah. So that's that, that kind of stuff. And one of the things you have yeah. cooking is a nonprofit organization yes. that yeah. you do. Um, in conjunction with your business, and how can people learn about that? What can they find you on Facebook, a website? Yes, yes. So we're on Facebook and uh, the website as well. It's the Attack Aviation Foundation. Okay. And it's just attackaviationfoundation.com. Okay. And um, the purpose and the mission of the of the nonprofit is to take it. We give wounded soldiers and high performing high school students motivational flights in our fighter jets. Ah. So just like the company is. Uh, U.S. wide, so right. is the foundation. So this year, the top student at Rancho High School is going to get a fighter jet ride. The top student at Coronado is going yeah. to get a fighter oh, jet ride. Yeah. All so. right. Well, topaviation.com, thank you so much for coming on. We had so much fun with you and hearing your stories. And we can't wait to catch up with you later as well. And cheers. Cheers. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys. Attack, yeah. All right, you guys. Well, thank you so much, Chef. And up next, we have Louisa with people from Life is Beautiful, which is a great, great music festival. Stay tuned. <laughs> who are some of the individuals behind Life is Beautiful, an inspirational music, food, art, and learning festival held in the heart of downtown Las Vegas. Today they are here to discuss what we can expect at this year's festival. 
Please put your hands together for Rehan Chaudhry, the founder of Life is Beautiful, <laughs> Justin Winnegar, and Ryan Doherty, Cheers. the founders of Wendell Media and Corner Bar Management. <laughs> <laughs> Always get the middle seat. Well, just as a, just as a congratulatory uh, thing, I got you guys shots. Oh yeah? yeah? I encourage you to drink them. And I will take them with you. It's to life is beautiful. All right. Mm. Finishers. It's on the bottom. Finish it. It's on the bottom. Finish it. <laughs> Somebody's got to finish it. All right. So, first of all, I just wanted to congratulate you guys on Life is Beautiful as a whole. I've been a big fan since it first came into fruition. Um, loved it. Have gone festival, But also, a entertainment experience. What do you guys have to say about that? Like, what does that mean to you? That's true. <laughs> Fact. Well, it's uh, so we, we consider it a lifestyle experience. Um, we chose to create a festival that isn't just weighted in one category. So, for example, typically you see music festivals that have art and have food and have other elements, but largely they're 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 weighted in music, right? So. Um, and, and they're great festivals out there, but, but we wanted to be something that was more um, representative of the way we live our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, music is the, probably the most prominent identifier for, for people um, coming together, falling in love, um, making memories, um, having unique experiences, I think. Um, but then you've got art that has become a visual identifier for people. So more and more via social media, Instagram, whatever it may be, you see um, people photographing themselves in front of murals, in front of street art, and they're uh, individually selecting which ones and which artists that they align with um, based on their own personality. So all of a sudden, um, street art, which wasn't necessarily considered a um, kind of affluent art category, has now become very mainstream and very um, highly accredited, and that's absolutely an integral part of the experience. Um, Add learning. So the reality is, is from when we're kids, we're, we're kind of forced into learning environments. But in today's world, we have the opportunity to be a part of learning environments that uh, appeal to kind of our own nature for consuming information. So short 15-minute talks that cover a wide variety of, um, of conversations uh, add fuel to the fire over the weekend. And lastly, um, food. So. Um, I, I know in my family, every, at the end of every day, we would come together over the dinner table, or friends come together over a bottle of wine, or um, people you haven't seen forever, people you meet for the first time come together over food. So that's an incredibly important element. But when you blend all of these together, all of a sudden it becomes a lifestyle experience and not just a festival or an entertainment event. I mean, the food part is my favorite, I'll be honest. <laughs> uh, do you guys concur? Absolutely. Do you agree yeah. with any, everything he said? Yeah. Say I concur. Perfect. Okay. I cool. concur. I concur. All right. All right. So, what exactly can we expect this year? Who and what are we should we expect? There's some changes this year. I mean, there is uh, every year. It's going to be all new bands, all new musicians. There's new artists, but um, you know, especially this year, we're downtown. We're running out of wall space to do murals, so the art direction has taken on uh, some new mediums. There'll be Besides just murals, which we'll have plenty of, but we'll have uh, some art taking an aerial. Uh, I'll give, I won't ruin the surprise, but we have large installations that are being done throughout the footprint that are not. Justin and Ryan of Wendo Media recently acquired part of Life is Beautiful. Why did Wendo Media decide to actually do that? You know, I think we've been uh, we've been working alongside the festival for the first two years. We we. We love Rayon and, and what he uh, what he concept and what he brought to not just downtown Las Vegas but to Las Vegas. Uh, we worked alongside it in a, in a you know officially as a in a, as a media partner. Um, really, Ryan and Rayon have a, a long-standing friendship. Um. <laughs> I made I made him quit his job to to do this festival. Yeah, no, that's true. That is um, absolutely true. Yeah, uh, so the best movie ever made. Yeah, so yeah. I uh, I was running entertainment at the Cosmopolitan. Um, three years ago, and had a lunch was scheduled with Ryan at um, the Holsteins. burger place, Holstein's. 
and sat down. We were supposed to talk work, and we started getting into it. And I stopped and I'm like, you know, I, I, I'm, I, I, I really am just not in the headspace to talk about work for the next hour. He's like, what's going on? I'm like, just talk about anything that you've got going on in your life, anything. I'm just going to sit here and listen, because I was just so kind of frustrated with work and my kind of day-to-day -day grind. And um, he started telling me about this great bar that he was going to open up. He just concepted it. It was going to be this uh, two-story bar in, in downtown uh, with a rooftop deck that overlooked Fremont Street on the corner of 6 and Fremont, overlooking the El Cortez. And a year, a year later, it turned out to be Commonwealth. Um, and he was telling me about Park and several other venues. And at the end of the lunch, he's like, what's going on with you? And I'm like, I think I'm going to quit my job. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, yeah. So I, I, I asked him, I asked him, he already asked me why, and I said, look, uh, I'm, I'm more, I find myself for the first time in my career more excited about the things that you haven't done yet than the things that I am supposed to be talking to you about right. in this lunch. Yeah. And uh, he's like, hey, when you get to that place in your life, get out. So I literally quit two days later. I heard from the rumor mill that last year, Kanye West actually requested that the Ferris wheel lights be turned off so he could have more attention to his performance. Is that true? <laughs> All right, so, so um, th there was a, I'll, I'll answer the question with another. So ja there, there was a big thing in, in, I think it was Rolling Stone or Billboard, that Jack White uh, submitted for another show an unreasonable list of requirements, specifically no bananas be anywhere near his <laughs> dressing room and anything associated with it. And there was this entire article that was written about, and people were commenting about how ridiculous it is for artists to be that kind of highbrow to demand unrealistic things and silly things like no bananas. And then he came out and explained the story that somebody on his tour uh, is allergic to bananas. And that's the reason why they couldn't have so these are actually legitimate reasons why artists often um, ask for certain requests. Um, before the show started, Kanye's entire um, show <laughs> for this tour is based around one singular source of, um, of digital content, which was the big, tall uh, LED column in the back. Right? So now he's using the pyramid, but at the time it was just one wall, and it was perfectly timed and scheduled to every piece of the music. And the idea is you're constantly focused on the red light. So regardless of where he's going or what he's doing, that becomes the center of attention. For our festival, we were one of the few that had a Ferris wheel directly across. So all it was doing was distracting people uh, for the other shows. So his tour manager requested that we shut off the lights for the Ferris wheel, not the actual circling of the Ferris wheel. Gotcha. Um, they may have had to shut the Ferris wheel down to turn all of it off, but um, it was really just turning the lights off to make sure it was completely dark around the entire perimeter of the field, um, except for that stage where that one kind right. of red light was. Well, I mean, if I were Kanye West, I would ask the same thing. I'd be like, turn off every light. It's beautiful. Just, yeah. you know, let's we, cancel everything. Whatever for me. We put it all on a clapper for him. <laughs> <laughs> we could do it at will. No, it's, it's, it's funny. This audience you know, is on a clapper. <laughs> in our... Um, <laughs> All right, well, in I have our, uh, something else for you guys. I know I got you some shots, spent my hard-earned money on that. I'm a volunteer, thank you so, I mean, you know, that, that's a lot coming from me. But, uh, so I know life can get really stressful. Every morning, I give myself an affirmation as an envelope, and so I actually made personal ones for you guys. So. Thank there you. you go. And you guys have to actually share uh -oh. what they say. All right. <laughs> Does not matter how many times. <laughs> Vince Lombardi, personal favorite. All right, Justin, what's your It saying? does not matter how many times you get knocked down, but how many times you get back up. Rise above the storm and you will find the sunshine. <laughs> Mario Fernandez. My, that was a lot of more set. Mine is her phone number. <laughs> <laughs> If, uh, Winky face emoji. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if opportunity does, <laughs> we're never getting invited back. <laughs> if opportunity doesn't know, uh, doesn't know. If opportunity doesn't knock, build a door. You. So keep those close. You know, when it gets pretty stressful. I know it's going to get pretty stressful the closer it gets to life is beautiful. Who wants yeah. a hat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I heard 
everybody, uh, this year, uh, Life is Beautiful will be uh, between the 25th and to the 27th of September. Uh, doors open at 2 p.m. Find tickets on Ticketfly, or you can also go to www.lifeisbeautiful.com, and you can also find them on social media. So, let's just give a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Have the perks. Thank you so Thank much. You. Our next performers are a Vegas made band. You can get more information about them at theperks.us. Ladies and gentlemen, the perks. like the weather as I wait for the sun to melt the snow and I know it won't get any better no 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 unless I make it so ooh, ooh, ooh. no matter where I run it follows and everywhere I go it's all the same give it a chance to be free would you take it and run, run until you make tomorrow The first of many better days If I had a chance to be free I would take it and run I'm dark inside like night time As I wait for the fire to start again And I know that I can look on that bright side No, 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 no Unless I let it in ooh, ooh, ooh. No matter where I run, it follows And everywhere I go, it's all the same Give it a chance to be free Would you take it and run? Run until you make tomorrow First of many better days If I had a chance to be free, to be free, to be free hey, well, I would take it and run well, I would take it on I would wait for the sun to rise And never let it fall again When you hear what I say Yeah, when you hear that sound Oh, I would take all the problems that I couldn't solve And i shoot them Everywhere I go, it's all the same Give it a chance to be free Would you take it and go Run until you make tomorrow The first of many better days If I had a chance to be free I would take it and run Thank you. Remember, you're welcome to come see us here, uh, the show live, every Thursday, right on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Fremont Street, in the heart of downtown Las Vegas at the Inspire Theater. Subscribe with us on YouTube and catch the web-only content, like our interview with my man Anthony Ray, a.k.a. Sir Mix-a-Lot. Good night, peace, love, and mirrorballs.